In this video, I'm going to share with you how you can use the Google Finance function to get some dividend yield information, but most importantly, how you can get dividend data on your spreadsheet so that you can find profitable dividend investment opportunities, track them, and do this without any code or complicated formulas. To get the yield information, we can use the Google Finance function, which comes automatically built into Google Sheets, so you can see how it works here. You can expand this information to see what data is available, as well as what examples are available. So in this case, we could just copy and paste this example right here, but we're looking for the yield data. Now, in order for that to happen, we need to enter the following information first you generally need to enter the type of data or the stock exchange where you're trying to get data for for etfs this would be mutf and this is going to indicate that this is going to be a mutual fund or an etf and then after that we enter the semicolon and then the ticker so in this case we're going to use this ticker right here and then it's going to ask us for the attribute that we want to access so the attribute is going to be this one right here you have to paste and have everything exactly as i'm showing you on the screen so here we go and now we enter the formula and we get the value now this value can be rounded so right now it's rounded but we can also add more decimals so that way we can see the value better now if you want to analyze multiple tickers or in this case multiple etfs in order to get the data what i would do is the following so first i would enter the different tickers that we're going to analyze so let's say these are the tickers that we're going to analyze here remember we need to enter the type of ticker that we're looking at so in this case we just enter this which is what we had before in the function and now we can just use the google finance function but we're gonna make it dynamic so that it automatically detects the ticker and then based on this ticker is going to give us the right information so the ticker in this case first we need to enter the type so we're going to enter the type then we're going to add an ampersand which is going to allow us to also enter the ticker but before the ticker if you remember we needed to enter a semicolon so we're going to enter the semicolon close the quotation mark and also the ticker so this is going to record all the information that we need and then after that we need the attribute and then for the attribute we're going to select this we're going to lock in c1 so that way when we drag the formula down it actually works so if i double click here you will see that this works right here now in this case this highlights one of the downsides of this method to get the data and that is the fact that not all funds are covered so in this case VU doesn't have any data which is why we're seeing the NA but if we change it to another ticker like this one you can see that this one actually has data and then you can just keep along creating your table but now I'm going to show you a way in which you can make a template like this for stocks, for ETFs, and have all of this different dividend information available in your spreadsheet so that you can make a template exactly like this or even better depending on your specific needs and of course your creativity. So as you can see here we have a list of stocks and this works for stocks listed in the American exchanges as well as stocks listed in the international exchanges. You just have to follow the Yahoo Finance sticker system. Once you have your stock list then you can start to get the dividend data that you need. So let's say that we wanted to get the dividend payments for all of these different stocks right here for the last 12 months. So in this case all we need to do is enter the symbols as you can see right here. Then we're going to need to enter the parameter or parameters and then we're going to need the period so in this case we can see that the symbols are right here uh, what we're going to enter is the dividend so that's going to be the parameter and then for the period we're going to enter ttm so this would be for the last 12 months and as you can see this is going to give us the dividend per share for all these particular companies on a ttm basis now if we want to get all their information it's easily available so let's say that instead of this we want to get the dividend information but we want to get it on for the last quarter or the last dividend payment so if you do lq for dividend information this is going to return the last dividend payment that this company is made now in this case we just need to adjust this right here or we can just lock it if we want so that way we could use it in other cells so it's 
picking up the right tickers click enter and as you can see the data is gonna come just like this so that way we can see the last dividend payment made now let's say we want to analyze this or to make this for the next 12 months so what we can do is we can actually get the dividend payments per year so now we're going to use a different function this is going to be the wise price function so we're going to select the symbols again and in this case the parameter is going to be dividend payments per year and because this is live metric we don't need any other information so we can just click enter and as you can see all these companies are paying dividends four times per year so now if we want to get the expected annual dividend we can just take the last dividend payment times the dividend payments per year and now we have a pretty good idea of what the companies are going to be paying for the next 12 months now let's say that we want to get other dividend information so for example let's say that we want to get the actual dividend yield of the company right now so for that we're going to type dividend yield and then we're going to go back to using the wise function and then select the symbols and then after that select dividend yield we want it on a ttm basis so that way we get the dividend yield based on the last 12 months of dividend payments and the current stock price so if i have this in my formula and click enter you can see that this is going to give me the dividend yield this is a percentage so i turn it into a percentage and now i have my dividend yield now something to keep in mind is that in this case we do have dividend as the parameter but we could also have another parameter and that is the adjusted dividend so this is adjusted for stock splits and things like that so once we use the adjusted dividend you will see that this parameter is available and if you just want to look at the entire dividend history of a particular company you can do something really simple yet very powerful so in this case we're going to select this company we're going to enter dividend and we could have a start date and end date so that way we could get the dividend history between those particular time periods but in this case even better we're just gonna get the entire data history so that way you know how this information is pulled up so this is the entire data history of the companies that we have so when you do dividend and you do it for the last 12 months is going to sum the last 12 months same thing happens for adjusted dividend dividend yield calculations are also based on this data you can also access the x date so let's say we want to access the x date for the last dividend payment of a company so again we enter y's we enter the symbols the parameter is going to be x date and we do this for lq but even if the company pays monthly or semi-annually this is going to give you the last date for the last dividend payment so as you can see now we have the x date here we could also get the payment date the declaration date so if we wanted to do the declaration date this would be very very similar so i will just paste this right here copy the formula and now instead of g1 i'm going to change it to h1 and as you can see we have the declaration date the x date we can also add a payout ratio as well as like you can add free cash flow you can add all kinds of financials and by the way this all comes from the y sheets add-on so this is an add-on that works on excel and google sheets you can see this is the menu here you can see this is where you can generate the functions based on the data that you want you can see here there's a ton of templates that you can download that already have a lot of really powerful formulas like the one that i showed you before so this is one of the templates that we have available so go check it out as i show you how to get payout ratio so i'm going to select again the list of companies we're looking for the payout ratio and we're looking for this on a ttm basis and as you can see now we have the number right here and just to show you how powerful this is you can also get this information for other financial metrics that have nothing to do with dividend data so in this case we're going to do the same thing we're going to select the list of tickers we're going to select the eps let's say we wanted for we could do 2024 we could do 2023 we could enter a year and a quarter we could do it for the last quarter in this case let's just take it for the ttm just so everything is comparable and as you can see we have all this information 
right here. And now with this information, you can start to apply this in some very creative ways. So this is one of the template that is pre-built and available to download absolutely free on Sheets, even if you have a free trial account. So you can just download the template and you can see the formulas that are being used to retrieve this data right here. This is one of the formulas. Here, this is information that you have to enter based on your portfolio. It tells you your cost basis, your current price, gives you the market value, gives you the last dividend, the payments per year, Year, the expected annual dividend. Again, this is all very simple Excel formulas that you can apply to any of the data. We have the yield on cost, total gain, day gain. You can see again the types of formulas that are being used. And yeah, this makes it super easy and super powerful to build models like this where you can just keep a really good look at your portfolio and the opportunities that are coming up in the market. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Let me know in your comments what you think about this particular template and what templates you're thinking of building. And I'll see you in the next one.